Welcome to the latest installment of the Vegan 123 podcast with me, Bertie Justice. Vegan 123 means the three big elements that our food choices and the things that we buy and use affect. So they affect our health, they affect the, affect the environment, and they also affect the animals. There's an overwhelming amount of evidence showing that veganism is, veganism is better for the animals, better for the environment, and better for our health. And it's good to combine all these three reasons as to why people should live a vegan lifestyle. I've been vegan for nine years now, and so this podcast is like an overview, a little sort of chat and a discussion about what I've experienced um, currently what's going on as in we've just gone through a period of lockdown and isolation in my case and I'm going to be talking about clean meats and basically my view on veganism and how we should live our lives based on my experience and all of the data that I've looked into and the kind of logical reasons why we should live our lives that way. So as I said, I've been vegan for about nine, nearly nine years and it's been really easy as an overview. All you simply have to do is consume something else. The thinking about it is more complicated, more stressful than the doing. So in the last, so for anyone li uh, listening to this, who's not vegan, in the last nine years, you and I have both done the same thing. We've both eaten and we've both buying, uh, bought products, whether that's cloves or like cosmetics. But the fundamental difference is that I've chosen something that as far as possible and practicable, hasn't used animals. And so I do understand that for some people it seems hard, it seems complicated, it seems too much work, it seems extreme. But really when, you've, when you sort of compare them Something that's hard is climbing a mountain. Something that's hard is having four kids under 10 and you're a single parent. Climbing a, uh, what else? Climbing a mountain, that's also hard. But in 2020, buying vegan food and products isn't hard. The majority of people I've ever met buy stuff from shops and those shops generally sell vegan and non-vegan items. So it's just that real easy, that simple pick up something else, cook something else and eat something else. It's not complicated. It doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be stressful. And I'm saying this from somebody who in the last nine years has made around 10,000 meals vegan. Obviously there's going to be a lot that are the same. So at the moment I eat a lot of oats for breakfast and I eat a lot of gnocchi and I eat a lot of rice and I eat a lot of gluten-free bread and I eat a lot of wraps and I eat a lot of curries and I eat a lot of stir fries and I eat a lot of vegan pizza gluten-free as well. And so in those 10,000, there's been a lot of overlaps. Probably oats is the most because that's the one that's been very easy to, to make and I enjoy eating it. But think about it, 10,000. 10,000 times I've just gone and made something else that didn't have bits of animal in it. It's really... People overcomplicate it and there's no need to. It's really easy. Um, and 
I'm always somebody that will want to help people succeed in living a vegan lifestyle. So if you need help transitioning or whatever, I've said this many times before, just get in contact and just ask me. Um, just ask me whatever you want and I'll tell you as it is. Um, very simple, very easy. And I do want to sort of go over why why I went down this lifestyle choice and the honest and brutal reasons are that eating animals to me doesn't make any logical sense at all. It tastes lovely, it tastes great. I've eaten so many bits of dead animals with so many different seasonings on and they do taste good. That's not that's not a, that's not up up for discussion. But taking someone else's life and separating them from their family and cutting up their body and then singeing their flesh and searing their flesh and marinating their flesh and their blood and their guts and their veins and their tendons and chewing on their bones and snapping their bones and making a wish with your chicken bone um, doesn't, doesn't feel right, doesn't seem logical and doesn't seem fair to the individual that's lost their life for a sandwich. And when you really look into, let's say, a slaughterhouse Let's go back a bit further actually. Let's start at the very beginning. So you have the, I'm, I'm theoretically, I'm gonna start my own, I'm gonna start my own pig farm, get some land, and I wanna make a lot of money. So I'm gonna like have them indoors most of the time and I'm gonna fatten them up. And I'm gonna call it as it is, and this is factory farming. Um, you, you might say higher welfare and you might say local and free range and that kind of thing, but these are all marketing terms that um, when you look at it, there's still the process of killing and the process of ending these lives, animals really young, and quite often when they're children as well. So like pigs get killed after six months. So Bertie's pig farm, I'm gonna, so I've got the land, I've created this uh, indoor sheds because that, um, that makes me the most money. And then I'm gonna give them a little bit of space outside. So they're gonna live in most of the time indoors, but then they do let out, they're allowed. I'm gonna call it free range because they, they see the grass. And if you buy the meat to me, that's local. And um, I'm even gonna do organic actually as well because it's healthier to do use less pesticides in their feed and those kind of things. And so Bertie's pig farm. And so first of all, I'm gonna contact a breeder. So the majority um, of animals in the UK are artificially inseminated. So someone's gonna have to have jacked off a male pig and then they're gonna artificially inseminate the female pigs and then I'm gonna get these piglets. And straight away, those piglets have been taken away from their parents, from their families. Um, and, or I could get a mother sow and s stick them in this little confined area with her babies. But there's gonna get a point when it's not profitable to keep the mum and the kids. So I'm gonna fatten up the kids and then um, I'm gonna take the mum away because she can't breed anymore. So I'm just gonna kill her after, when, when she stops, stops breeding, I'm gonna kill her and her life. And then the kids grow up and then some of them go off to be killed in lots of weird ways. So some of the ways is to put them in gas chambers and then I'm gonna keep some of them for more breeding. So I'm gonna get somebody to come and artificial, artificially inseminate the females. And then I'm just gonna separate the family again. I just feel like, yeah, it's more profitable to do that. And so I'm just gonna separate the families. And that's one of the things that jumps out at me more recently is that 
I like my family. I like spending time with my family. But we don't grant this to the animals that we eat and use. We separate their families. So milk is a prime example of this. You can't get milk without separating families. Um, that milk was, when, once the cow got pregnant, she started developing the ability to feed her baby calf the milk and the, the, the milk is designed for that baby calf. And then we take the baby calf away because obviously the, the baby calf would be drinking the milk that we're going to make money from. And I, that, doesn't, that doesn't sit right with me. That doesn't make any sense, especially now I know how to make my own oat milk and my own cashew milk and my own mixed nut milk and my own um, almond milk. Like, Or you can just, if you don't want to make it, um, it's very easy to make it. I've made a video about how simple it is. You can do it in like three minutes. You can make some cashew milk or nut milk. But the actual process just doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to separate a family? These animals are maternal. These animals do know that they're their mums and the cows scre um, bellow out and scream like any mum would if you took away her baby and then it, it pissed me off more that not only have they stolen their baby for milk that they don't need but they're then gonna milk the mum for money as well and then the mums get killed when their time runs out and all of these things that I'm saying you can look them up yourself and make a adult logical decision if you still want to be a part of that system because that's what that's one of the main kickers at the beginning of this journey that I was on from when I found out about well, not not necessarily that I found out but when I thought about more deeply where animal products come from I don't want to be a part of that process. I don't want to contribute to the suffering of others. And after nine years of being a vegan, I am proof that you don't need to eat animal products. The, uh, the, the PDF that I created called Healthy Vegan Diets is further proof that human beings don't need to eat animal products. The vegetarian friends that I know from birth who have pretty much never eaten meat are an example that human beings don't need to eat meat. The millions or even billions of Hindus who are vegetarian who've never eaten meat are proof that you don't need to eat meat to survive. The fact that one to two in 10 or around 10 million people in the UK are lactose intolerant means that we don't need to eat and all those people that we shouldn't really be eating animal products and those 10 million people who are lactose intolerant don't consume dairy or shouldn't consume dairy because it's bad for them the ones that don't consume the dairy are proof that you can survive without eating dairy which generally comes from other mammals from another species and Human beings do drink milk, but from their mums and when they're babies. We're not cows, we're not sheep, and the majority of people I know are not weaning babies. Not, not necessarily weaning, but just not babies. And then on a world scale, it's uh, around 65% of the world population are lactose intolerant. So that's 4.9, or around, around this figure, 4.5, sorry, 4.9 billion human beings, their bodies are designed to not drink cow's milk or sheep's milk or any other mammal's milk. They're lactose intolerant. That's, that's more than half the world aren't designed to drink dairy, but we have like all these crazy like milk adverts and milk does a body good and all this other um, slogans. That doesn't make any sense. 
you're talking about a you're talking about the smaller percentage the, the not the the majority are lacto the majority of human beings <laughs> that's how majorities work is when you have more than 50 percent the majority of human beings on the planet are lactose intolerant which means they're not designed to drink dairy or animal um animal products just that's mental that's really mental so every time you now see a milk ad you think well they're not they're, they're talking to a very small small part that so they're talking to not the, the majority they're talking to a smaller part of the um the world population and also you have things like look into those adverts because they're really deceiving you know you have like pictures of cows in fields and you have pictures of smiling cows and little like using words like happy and free range and like basically just just words essentially but actually all those industries pretty much involve killing animals for their products whether it's male chicks who are generally killed after a couple of days whether it's male calves who aren't going to be used for the um, for beef or for veal they're killed really young and also like look into the age of the animals like when they talk about they people put out this notion of they, the animals have a happy life that's nonsense that's false that's a lie they might be it might be happy but they're not living their full life they're living whatever makes the most profit life i.e two days if you're a male chick six months if you're a pig six weeks if you are a chicken um that's not that's not the that's not their whole life that's all oh, they had a nice little comfort they had a lovely field and they were protected from foxes, blah, 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 all the food they want. And then they were killed in a electric vat or a gas chamber or they were stunned and they had their, their throat slit and the blood, the blood, um, the blood of these animals seeps out everywhere or they're fish and they're suffocated. It just, it's a whole industry of weird, violent, needless suffering as human beings don't need to do that to animals. Um, it's 2020, all that needless violence, like there's another option, there's another option. and. I'm just going to reach over now to my drink. So there's going to be some slurpy, slurpy noises. And in my drink is some mint. So my neighbor has an allotment and they don't use any pesticides and they don't use any animal manure. So the mint in my drink has been grown without animal manure. So it's some, just a pint of water with some mint leaves and some uh, mint flowers in there. So you're going to hear every now and then you're going to hear some slurpy slurpy gulpy gulpy noises but that is that is the nature of this podcast today. So the point about the mint is it's just really nice to to consume products that haven't involved animals and I'm looking out the window now and I can see some chives that are from the same allotment. I've got some chocolate mint and I've got some of my own mint plants and there's a growing awesome movement of the vegan organic network and I'll probably do another um, podcast about them soon but um, look into it. It's, um, it's the way farming should be. Less suffering, less deaths, less direct violence, less suff um, killing, less stabbing, less blood, less guts, less separating families, and just a lot kinder. It's a kinder way of living, a more compassionate way of living. And 
So in the UK, we had a, we're still in the middle of um, lockdown. So there's certain restrictions about how we can live and how many people can meet up at the same time and you can't go to certain places and lots of different rules. And I was isolated. I had a cough and I thought I might have had, um, I might have had COVID. So I basically um, had to isolate for a couple of weeks and I was on my own. And it was quite unusual to not see other human beings for um, extended periods of time. And it did seem lonely and it did seem weird and it did seem like restrictive to only have one hour a day to um, to get out and shopping was more difficult and like getting food and people delivering food for me and it was it was definitely a challenge and definitely like an insight it was an insight into what animals are going through every single day um, by their billions um, and if you include fish, um, trillions. But let's just focus on the land animals, um, billions at the moment. Um, and I like to always use the UK as an example because that's where I live right now. That's the most local, that's the most... Um, the, the people that I, the majority of people I know where they get it from, where they get their animal products from. And animals are isolated. Animals are on lockdown. They're not allowed generally out of the perimeter of whether it's a, a free range farm or whether it's a factory farm. Those animals are restricted to that area. They're forced to live in those areas with complete strangers. Some of them might be like brothers and sisters or relatives, but they're, they're still forced um, to live with a bunch of strangers for let's say the pigs on Bertie's farm um, for six months before they're killed for meat that human, human beings don't need. But the actual psychology of those animals must to be in to to live the way they do that is to live in that isolation the whole time and just be in this cramped environment we as human beings we can go to nature we can go and visit families and we can go and talk to people and say this is stressing me out or how can i improve this and there's there's ways of improving the, the current situation we have we have autonomy we have um we have control over our situations but these animals are stuck there they're stuck in and i've seen some farms i i quite often just go for a walk and then have a look in you can go on public land and you can look in to see how these animals are being like what they're living on and I've seen cows living in absolute squalor um, up to their like up to about 30 centimetres in dung. Just like having to tread through poo and piss and shit and crap and sitting in it and lying in it. And that just doesn't like that's that's not nice. They They don't have to be like that. They're squashed in there because it makes more money and that's the reality of the situation. But the reality of the situation is that the, the farmers could find another job. It, it's been done before, um, but they're currently stuck maybe in tradition or like because they're in debt or they're stressed and worried and or they're frightened of change. Like there's there's all these different reasons, but the reality is that why these animals are kept in such squalid conditions is because it makes more money um, 
otherwise why wouldn't why wouldn't you have them in like a b and b or a, uh, a hotel like a cow hotel or a pig hotel with like their own ensuite toilet and like um three meals a day and like a butler service and stuff like that like why why wouldn't you do that if you if you're the welfare of these animals is the priority but we don't live in that world we live in a world that is driven by um, a pound sign or a dollar sign or whatever your currency is so the welfare of these animals gets put down and lower lower on the the list of priorities and that's the reality um that's that's my view on it at the moment but the great view that i have is that i know that human beings don't need to eat animal products a i'm living proof of it and b as i said there's the pdf that shows that you don't need to eat animal products and the fact that there's millions of uh, vegetarians already in the world and the fact that like 65 percent of the world population don't need to, uh, are lactose intolerant means you just don't need to eat animal products anymore and it's a simple choice that we can all make it's very easy just to pick some lentils up and cook with them instead of ground up bits of cow or marinate some tofu or scramble some tofu instead of if eating chicken periods or buy some veggie sausages instead of pig flesh sausages whatever the whatever there's a switcheroo that you can make whatever change you can make it's really easy um and i've done this before but it's quite crazy to unravel points that people make so people make the point that um cavemen ate meat so you know if we've been doing it for thousands of years then we should carry on doing it. But like sl slavery was going on. We don't do that anymore because we've realized that it doesn't make any sense. Um, we don't, in, in England especially, we don't live in caves anymore. We have running water. You know what I mean? Like that's the opposite to a caveman. So what non-vegans quite often do is pick on tiny elements that justify their reasons to carry on with the habits that they're currently doing because they don't like change or whatever other reason or excuse they want to bring up but they're quite often baseless and illogical um yeah okay so cavemen did eat meat yeah but some cavemen didn't eat very much meat so you're going to eat the same amount of meat as the cavemen um, are you going to move into a cave? Are you going to um, not use a toilet anymore? Are you going to never use the internet again? Because cavemen never use the internet. Cavemen didn't drive in cars. But you're driving in a car, so you're not a caveman. Why are you picking on one element of their diet? And, I mean, another example is the lions do it. And like, oh yeah, lions eat meat or other animals that eat meat. And then you look at the animal kingdom and there's like thousands of animals that don't eat meat like why are you picking on why are you choosing again why are you choosing lions I've never seen a lion drive a car or live in a house or use running water so why are you doing that i mean yeah why why would you, if you want to live like a lion and you think that's a good way of living then you copy them completely otherwise your point is just doesn't make any sense and why picking a lion like as i said there's herbivorous animals that don't eat other animals it's um yeah it just doesn't make any sense and once you highlight this it's kind of there is there is the stage where it does need to be repeated you do need to talk well, people will bring up lions again and again and again, and they will bring up cavemen did this, and they will bring up, like, tradition. Tradition, people have been doing it for ages. It's like, yeah, so? Why are you, why are you copying other people? You, you make your own informed decision, um, and you change. Like, 
some countries they stone people for being homosexual like they've been doing that for years so should they maintain that or should they question it and be like well it doesn't make it makes a logical sense like being homosexual or being gay isn't isn't an issue like it doesn't harm anyone directly it's it's something that is absolutely fine unlike eating animals which ends the lives of others needlessly and another like another topic that um does get brought up and i like to talk about it and discuss it as well is um clean meat and um what i mean by clean meat is stem cell meat and stem cell burgers and stem cell um chicken breasts and um even stem cell fish actually that's um being produced and for me um the reason i think it's an interesting topic is because it could be a solution um for me um it doesn't eating stem cell meat isn't vegan um because it's an animal product and that's not what the lifestyle says like it's a, the lifestyle is about not using animal products but for those people that want the same taste and want that exact same te- uh, texture and won't won't become vegan for whatever reason like they just won't like they you know that's one of the things is that you can't physically i mean you could actually you could make being vegan law and then like um meat is illegal a bit like drugs get your hit of like um get me some bacon man i need a hit um that that i mean like technically you can outlaw eating bits of dead animals but in the meantime um you can't i i can't physically stop everyone in the uk eating meat and killing animals or like going fishing or whatever and for those people who won't change um then stem cell meat creates a solution because they they then can have that thing that they wanted the same taste even the to add on to this i also believe that the the and the mock meats that already exist basically taste the same like i've mixed in meals before and people have said if you hadn't have told me that that wasn't me i wouldn't have been able to tell the difference but for those for those adamant um adamant meat eaters stem cell meat provides a solution that they they then are a part of a system that creates less suffering so an example would be like i saw a part of the clean meat development is or stem cell meat is using a feather from a chicken and then taking the cells from the the feather so the feather wasn't directly taken from the chicken so technically there's no direct suffering it's still an animal product but there's no direct suffering similarly you could do that with um you could do that with hopefully you could do that with the other animals as well and what that would do is mean if it becomes a thing then people can buy that instead of buying dead flesh that came from other animals who do suffer and so yes if that's going to if that's going to create less suffering then i that's that would be better than the current system i i hope and i sort of dream that people will just move away from animal products um that would be the the best solution for me and 
what I've noticed as well is that um, there's so many amazing documentaries um, out there for people to learn about veganism and to learn about um, to learn about the truth about where animal products are coming from. So there's loads that I would recommend, but like five of them that are jumping out at me are Making the Connection um, and Carnage, Dominion, Cowspiracy and The Game Changers. I've also got a list of um, a collection of films for people to watch on my website and like recommended um, vegan films and also a website that's recently come out is called vegmovies.com which is a great collection of lots and lots of amazing amazing movies um, inspiring and delving into the reality of where animal products come from and the inspiring stories about vegan athletes and people improving their health with vegan diets and yeah it's um, a really good learning resource and a really good sort of area for people to go to and so I'll go full circle now um, and so I've been vegan for nine years now and technically I have accidentally eaten animal products in those nine years. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I can remember eating a dip that might have had milk in it, and I remember eating. Um, I remember eating a gluten-free, dairy-free roll, and I was chewing it, and my friend pointed out that it had milk in it. Um, no, was it egg free? It would have been either way. Basically on the front of it, it said gluten free, dairy free or egg, no, dairy free. And then on the ingredients it had, um, it had egg in it. And I hadn't made that connection that dairy and egg aren't the same thing. And so I stopped chewing took the bread out of my mouth and spat it out and moved on. Um, like a mistake happens and it's not worth dwelling on because obviously it's about intent. Um, it's about the intent that um, I didn't, you know, the rest of my life I intend not to eat animal products and if it does accidentally happen, then that's part of life and it's not a big deal. And just jumping out, like what I just come to think of is the uh, some people moaning about how long it takes to read ingredients, and it doesn't take long. Um, we're really fortunate now that a lot of products are labelled vegan, so that that's you know you're just looking for one label that says vegan. But for those like me, because I'm gluten free and can't eat chili, I have to eat, have to read most labels because those things, my body doesn't like them. And so I read every ingredient mostly and start to learn about which ones are vegan and which ones aren't. But the most of the allergens, which is like milk, eggs, wheat, um, soya, they're all labelled bold because they're, they're proper allergens and reading labels is something you get used to, it's very easy and if you're not, if you really hate, hate it, um, another easy solution is just to cook from scratch, so like buy lentils, buy beans, buy chickpeas and the only ingredients in there will be chickpeas and water pretty much like it's and fruits and vegetables and chopped tomatoes and um, those kind of things are you know if you cook with them then you haven't got to read the ingredients but you can read the ingredients and it's not impossible and 
I've been doing it for years and it's very easy. It's really easy. Very much like being a vegan is very easy. It's really easy once you realize all you're doing is buying something else and consuming something else. You take all the stress away. You're like, oh, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? You'll find your way. It's very easy and you get into a groove and simply just don't eat animal products. Just say no to something that's come off somebody else. If it's a product that has separated a family or like milk is the like one of the craziest ones. It's like that milk is designed for a baby calf. Shouldn't be drinking that really. Very easy. Just don't. Very simple. Just don't. Just, just consume something else instead. And yeah, I, I keep bringing it back to the nine years. Um, because to me, 10,000 vegan meals is a lot. That's a lot of meals that I've chosen to not include animal products and to be honest if I can do it then anyone can do it and please look into all look please look into all the things that I talked about and make your own mind up on it make your own mind up after watching Dominion if you think it's right the way we treat animals or what you think is is locked down um, very similar to what the animals are going through and do you want to be a part of that system that's what it's really about it's about asking ourselves logical questions saying do we want to be a part of this system and if you don't like that system then it's about doing something about it it's about actively changing it it's about taking whatever steps you need to do to change your current way of living and improve your lifestyle so that you become more in align with who you really are more in align with like if watching a fish being killed makes you feel uncomfortable don't buy fish again because the fish you're eating and the fish you eat had to be killed if you don't like the idea of artificial insemination and bulls being jacked off and females being um having arms put in their anuses and that kind of thing if that makes you feel uncomfortable which it should don't consume dairy again don't support that industry don't be a part of that system if the idea of putting a baby chick in a blender after two days or suffocating a baby chick so that you can have an omelette or you can have um, a poached egg on toast like try and picture every time you pick up an egg think there's probably a male that's been suffocated or put in a blender or put in a grinder or killed after two days I don't that doesn't that doesn't feel right doesn't make any sense and when you're eating bacon or when you're eating steak think what age did this animal die how many resources had to go into fattening up that animal and how what kind of relationship did they have with their family because of the industry that i'm supporting am i separating families am i sending animals to slaughter slaughter gas chambers stunning throat slitting, suffocation, electric baths, stab, 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 death, 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 violence, violence, violence. If you don't want to be a part of, if you don't want to contribute to that system, then choose something else. Choose to do something else and actively don't be a part of that system. As I said, I've been doing it for nine years and it's really easy. And if any of you want any other help transitioning to be to take yourselves out of that um, system, give me a shout. And I hope you all have a really lovely day. Peace.